Hi, uh, when I was a kid, I um, came to the realization that um, the best way for me to learn about things was to humble myself enough to ask dumb questions. And uh, um, in a math class, I got up in front of the um, uh, you know class while the other students were doing work, and I started asking my math teacher just one dumb question after another. And I guess to kind of uh, uh, you know rebel against my um, own tendency to be shy and asking questions, I purposely asked the stupidest questions I possibly could, and one dumb question after another. And uh, um, it was kind of funny because the uh, uh, other students were just laughing at me and making jokes, and, and you know, it would be humiliating for most people, but uh, me, I didn't care. But, <laughs> but anyways, uh, um, the thing is, it was so funny, is I just kept on asking these stupid questions over and over. And before long, I ended up starting uh, uh, to make uh, A's and everything, uh, you know, straight A's in math. And uh, um, I ended up in a higher math class, and I left behind all the other students that were going on and on about how stupid I was. So, it is important in order to learn, you have to humble yourself to ask the dumb questions. And I have some dumb questions I'd like to ask. And uh, if there's anyone out there who's into, you know, heating, refrigeration, and thermodynamics and whatnot, uh, I'd sure like some uh, um, feedback on uh, um, this. And so, uh, you know, hopefully uh, listen to my questions and maybe you can give, some, give me some answers. Um, but anyways, I've been studying, you know, refrigeration and heating for a while now. And, uh, you know, it's like my uh, dad and Fernando. Uh, um, they both commented that, you know, because they uh, were in the refrigeration, they both commented while going to um, school, it's like this one person after another would drop out. People get into it because they know their money, there's, there's money into it. They don't realize how complicated it is. And very few people are able to make it to the end. Uh, but anyways, um, uh, some, there's some questions that I'm having trouble with. Uh, I, uh, my um, dad and everything, he says that for somebody my age, I know more on it than uh, most. But there's just certain things I haven't been able to figure out. And uh, um, uh, one of those things is like I was studying uh, Joseph Black's uh, uh, fluid theory on heat. And I can see how, you know, the kinetic theory on heat is, uh, um, seems to be more valid and has, has replaced it. Um, but, um, and I can see how it makes sense like if um, atoms and molecules are like uh, little rubber balls. And the uh, more kinetic energy you put in there, the more the little balls bounce around and the more uh, gas expands and everything. And that makes sense. And I've learned, you know, many of the basics of entropy and everything. But um, when it comes to, um, uh, you know, how that exactly works at the molecular level, it just doesn't make sense to me. Because, I mean, uh, um, I, when I think of kinetics, I think of, you know, velocity, uh, momentum, um, acceleration and mass and, you know, things like that, centrifugal force. I don't think of uh, it, it, see how it works at the molecular level because um, when I think of an atom or a molecule, I think of something that has a, a um, nucleus made of uh, protons and neutrons, a very small nucleus with a very large electron cloud around it. And uh, as far as what I know about you know physics and everything, that uh, atoms and molecules interrelate with one another only through their electron cloud. Um, they, the protons and neutrons do not touch one another. Um, you know, one molecule or atom to an enter. And if that is the case, that means the kinetic energy, I presume, must be transferred from one atom or molecule to the other um, by, um, um, through the electron cloud. Uh, so does that mean that um, kinetic energy at the general level tra travels through an electromagnetic field? Um, that is just something that is very much a puzzle to me. Uh, I, I don't really seem to understand a very precise definition of what kinetic energy is. I mean, I used to think, just think of it as just being simple mechanical energy, but it sounds like it's a little bit more complicated than that. And I just uh, I haven't really understand exactly what kinetics is. And I'd certainly like some feedback if there's anyone out there who uh, knows uh, about that subject. Um, and uh, um, the um, uh, other question that I have has to do with uh, uh, latent heat and sensible heat and uh, evaporative cooling. Um, in fact, this is kind of what I talked to uh, Jamie Heineman about that one day I met him uh, at that VA center. And uh, um, uh, it has to do with a certain, I guess, myths that I've heard about um, evaporative cooling. Like uh, one myth is that uh, an evaporative cooler doesn't actually cool your body. In fact, this is a fabric cooler right here. You can probably tell by the sound that uh, the pillar block is kind of going out. But, uh, <laughs> but anyways, uh, um, uh, one myth is that these evaporative coolers like this, these swamp coolers, that they don't really cool your body down. They just trick you into thinking that you're cooled down. 
And the other myth that I've heard is that you can't exercise under a um, evaporative cooler, uh, that, that you, you don't sweat properly or something like that, because I had this uh, garage in which I uh, lifted weights in. And uh, um, this uh, guy I knew, he said, you know, you better not do that with the evaporative cooler on, because I had a cooler there. And uh, um, because, you know, it won't let you sweat probably. And I tell you, that uh, garage had a corrugated sheet metal roof, and I live out here in the Mojave Desert, not far from Edwards Air Force Base. Uh, I definitely would prefer to have the smoke cooler on. It's much more comfortable. Um, but uh, um, on the first question, uh, I, I'm, I'm inclined to think that the reason people say that uh, evaporative cooling just tricks you into thinking you're cooler is they don't un really understand the concepts of latent heat and sensible heat. I presume that, uh, as far as what I can read, is that latent heat is like, uh, um, basically it's a, uh, um, um, you keep on uh, applying uh, more and more BTUs to a substance uh, without any kind of change in temperature or uh, change in uh, state of any kind. Uh, until it hits a certain threshold, and, and then it then there's a change. And uh, um, and I know for different materials like oil versus water, uh, there's a different amount of uh, BTUs that you have to put into the substance before the um, uh, there's a uh, you know a change in sensible uh, um, temperature or a change in state. And uh, I think um, in regards to an evaporative cooling, it still removes uh, BTUs from your body. It just it, it doesn't uh, remove. Um, you know, like uh, the BTUs that would uh, produce any kind of uh, uh, change in state or, 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 you know, I mean, but the thing is, in regards to a sensible, a sensible temperature, it does cause a, a thermometer to go down. So it is something that's kind of a puzzle to me. I mean, I've, I've heard that for many years, that evaporative cooling does not, um, uh, you know, affect latent heat. Uh, it's just, uh, um, you know, um, I don't know, I, and while well, air conditioning does. So um, I just like if there's anyone out there who uh, knows about this subject, I'd certainly like some uh, feedback on it, and um, you know I, I certainly appreciate it, and thank you, and 